ISO FileMaker Magazine, the professional's resource for FileMaker know-how. Hey there, and how are you doing? This is Matt Petrowski, always creating FileMaker videos. You can always find more over at FileMakerMagazine.com. In this video, we are going to be talking about portals. In fact, I'm going to be giving you the three key uses of portals. Let's go ahead and do that right now. All right, here we are on my desktop. We are going to be working with a file. Now you get to follow along. This is a follow along video. There's nothing super special in this file. In fact, it is a blank file. All I did was go up to the file menu and chose the create new option. I suggest you do the same. We are going to be following along with what I do here on screen, learning about these three key uses. Now the first key use is to use portals as intended. This is their native and default behavior. So as I go into define database with uh, command shift D or control shift D if you're on Windows, we can go into the tables area and we can see that when I created this file, it was called portals and it made a, an initial table called portals for me. Well, that's not what I want. So I am going to put in here, normally I, I think in terms of customers, you can think that I, you can see that I'm typing in customers down here, but in essence, what I should be thinking is in terms of people because people are customers, people can be vendors, people can be uh, suppliers, all kinds of things. So we're going to change that and I'm going to change um, one other thing, I'm going to call it details for right now, but that's because I would typically store more than just what we're going to be dealing with here, which are phone numbers. So normal process in our FileMaker database, I've got a person, I'm in the people table, which is very clear right there. And I would create a name first and then probably a name last. And this just happens to be how I'm naming the fields. If you like to name them with spaces or uppercase, FileMaker will take this just fine. I don't tend to do that. A uh, reason is I don't like these spaced values in um, technology. When you really get down to it, a lot of things work out better when you don't have spaces. It's easier to read when it comes to the code. Unfortunately, in FileMaker, we do not have something where we can create a technical name for a field, but then have a human readable name that users can see within the user interface. So this is the display that other users would see if let's say they went into the sort, sort dialog, but what have you. So first problem that use, uh, brand new FileMaker users hit is when they're adding fields, they start adding duplicates. So if I put in here a phone number and I now need a second number. That is my indication right there as I add phone number two. I actually didn't need to do change. I wanted to click create on that. I actually just got a duplicate. You saw that happen on screen. Anytime in all of computer programming, they have this thing called do not repeat yourself. And the immediate thing that I do, as soon as I detect that I did something in duplicate, is I ask myself, should this be broken out somewhere else? So we're going to get rid of these. I'm going to hold the option key and click the delete button. They are both going to go away. I'm going to switch over to my details table. And here is where I'm going to put in my phone number. <clears throat> and I'm going to create that. Now, in order for two tables to be linked so that we can use a portal by for its default purpose, is we have to have a connection between these two. We go to the relationships graph. And we know that there's going to be a connection between people and details. This is because I am storing my information specific to a person. What's specific to a person? Well, your first name, your last name, your middle name, social security number. Uh, you're not going to have multiples of those if you're in the U.S. or some type of ID issued by the government. A phone number is something that I can have multiple of. So since I can have multiple, I'm going to create that in a separate table, which I did in details, but I need to be able to link people to details. Now, if you haven't already learned this somewhere else, not critical to uh, what we're talking about here in this video portals, but is critical to data structure. We need to go into this details table and we need to create what's called a foreign key. So I'm going to call this ID people. Now this just happens to be how I like to program. Um, as I move this to the side, all of my primary keys are ID and all of my foreign keys start with that same primary key uh, word ID, but then an underscore and the last, uh, the name of the table that it's connecting to. So as I click create here, we're now able to connect these and this is going to be our first default use. 
this is how you use portals. This is how you learn FileMaker. This is what you do. So we are going to allow from people connected to my foreign key of ID people. So you can see right here, people is connecting to people right there. So with that connection, I now have what's called a one too many. We can see that it's a one too many because we can see in this example right here, there is no multiple little, there's the little crow's feet representing multiple isn't there. So there is only one ID that can relate to multiple details. So that means any given person can have multiple details. And that's exactly what we've got. I could have multiple phone numbers. So as I accidentally double click that, I'm going to click on the relationship. We'll back off here a little bit and we will see that I am going to turn on this option right here of allow creation of related records. We won't worry about deleting for right now, but down the road, if you ever do delete a person, we want to make sure that all of the details for that person go away as well. And so typically we will turn this on. In fact, it doesn't matter if I do it right now, but we're talking about portals. So I now have a setup ready for me to go. So I'm going to go into layout mode and I'm going to add by switching over in the inspector here, my fields, I'm going to add at the very least my first name and my last name. I'm going to select a couple of options down here. I'm going to put some labels above on these and my field placement is just fine. I'll have them on top of each other. We'll drag them out. So we've got my first, my first name, my last name. We'll go ahead and create a record. I already actually have one record in the database. One good thing to always check. I know this doesn't have to do with portals, but I'm going to put a field on the layout. I'm going to turn off the create temporary label but I'm going to put the ID field temporarily on the layout. Sometimes in FileMaker, you will hit an issue where the default record that is created by FileMaker may not necessarily, depends on when you add the primary key field or whether it's automatically entered. Mine was automatically entered, but it's always good to double check and make sure that you have that primary key value. Now I know in a lot of other FileMaker videos, you will have people suggesting that you use what's known as a serial number. You don't wanna do that, you want to use ID values and those ID values as we take a quick trip into people typically are going to use this function get UUID or if you're using a number field it would be get UUID number but what I've heard and what I've seen and what I've researched it's not that much better in terms of performance you're usually okay with just a get UUID primary key so are you ready we are now ready to set up our first use case of a portal. That's where we go up to our portal tool. So right here, we're going to select this. We can now drag that portal out. The portal is going to, uh, the portal wizard is going to ask us what we want to do with this portal. For example, I can drag this out as big or as small as I want right here. But what it's going to do is it's going to ask me in this area, what do I want to do? And this is where you're going to see that you have the option for the number of rows. Now the records that I show in a portal, this is the big lesson in this video. A portal is just a display mechanism. Now I will repeat that over and over as we get to the other two key areas of use. But a portal in its primary native use is designed to show related data. But what did I just say a little while ago? A portal is just a display mechanism. It is not inherently tied to the structure of your data and displaying only related data. That's where we're, gonna, we're going to get into the other two key uses. Now, a portal has some options. We can sort some records. That's that checkbox right there. And you can do that based on a calculation. We can filter the content coming from the relationship. In other words, Let's say in this scenario, I have a number of uh, phone numbers and I don't want to show a certain prefix. We'll go ahead and actually put that example in. Um, I also get to turn on the ability to delete portal records. Maybe I don't want to let people delete them. In this case, I do. If I add a phone number, if I select that portal row, I want to be able to get rid of it. I'm also going to turn on scrolling anytime that you're going to allow a portal to go beyond a certain number. Now, if you're designing using a portal, and a portal is just a tool in FileMaker, just like a button or a popover or anything else, 
if you're going to use a portal to show, let's, let's say, a fixed matrix, let's say you have five wide by four down of something that you're going to show. Maybe it's playing, uh, maybe it's three by three and you're playing tic-tac-toe. Yes, you could create tic-tac-toe in FileMaker. Then you're not going to turn on the scrolling. In this case, we turn on the scrolling and we will do the scroll bar when scrolling. That works well for mobile. If you want to show the indication of how many records are in a portal, then turning on the always on a scroll bar is a good thing. Users are used to that. It's been going on since the beginning of computing. We typically, I typically, don't ever check this option right here. Then when it comes to our display, we've got the alternate row state and the active row state. This really only applies if visually you want to give a differentiation between every uh, even and odd row. You're going to use this option right here. Leave that one checked. If you're going to be allowing a user to select a row and then do something with that portal row or based on that portal row, then you can use this one right here. And again, these are settings that are in the design settings. They're in the inspector. But we can say, how many rows do we want to have in this? Now, I believe it's going to account for the how I dragged this out and stick those in there. You can see right now that it was showing one through nine in the space that I had, uh, the dimensions I had dragged that out to. But with five, let's see if it adjusts. It does within that area. So this wizard is now going to prompt me for what fields do I want to show. In this case, I really only need to show the phone number, and I'm going to say OK. So this is our default first use case for a portal. I'm going to put in my name, and I'm going to add in a phone number. Now, by default, a portal, when you have the option, I'm going to head into the defined database, and we're going to go to our relationships and we're going to open up our relationship by double clicking a portal by default. When you have this option, allow creation of uh, records in this table via the, re the relationship. When this is turned on, what you get is this. The last portal row is always going to be an entry row, but there's an issue with that. When you get data that goes past that point, you can no longer see the add new record. So let's just add a bunch of records right here. Um, 800-555-1212. All right, so that's the first number for Matt. Well, you can see that by using a structure that is set up relationally and using this portal, I now get to add an unlimited number of values in here. But you can see right here, based on my display, as I mentioned, the last row is the row that normally the user has to scroll down in order to get to this. Now, when you're working with a portal, there's multiple ways to solve this. I've got tons of videos over at the magazine website of different things you can do. You can use a separate dedicated portal just for the purpose of entry. You can use uh, create a different table occurrence and connect it and use that for entry. You can add a little button right here where my cursor is, like a plus button. You click that plus button and it goes to this portal and then automatically scrolls down to the bottom of the last record goes into the field and is sitting here ready for the user to actually input their new value 800 444 1212 there are multiple ways that you can capture data into a portal don't just think that oh i have to do it the filemaker way with it all the way at the bottom to me that's annoying and we've got solutions for it but you can see that we've got this scroll bar and if I select on any given uh, row, if I hit the delete key, what will happen is FileMaker will see that I'm trying to delete that. I can add a button for a trash can on that particular row, and the user can click the button and delete it and get rid of things. So I select the row, I delete it. The key thing is that the portal, when you have a selection, understands its context. So if I select this row, any other data that's in that related table, that table details, I am able to access when I run a script. So if there's a button right here on this row, or if I simply select this row and then click a button outside, you can basically understand that FileMaker has a context. Now, if I click outside and it's not a button, when I click outside, notice that my selection it comes off, it becomes deselected. So that row is no longer selected when I click out of it. But if I had a button, let's add one really quickly. We'll go up to our layout. 
We'll select the button tool. We'll drag the button out right here. And we will just call this button. And we don't need to do nothing right now. We can actually just do a single step. And I, a lot of the times when I'm setting up my database and I'm programming in FileMaker, I add just a single step that's a placeholder until I actually create the script or wire things up. I'm just going to put in a beep right here and we're going to test my little theory here because I want to, I always need to double check. So I select the row, I click the button, the beep happens, but see that the row was not deselected. That's a key thing to know about portals. I thought I was right. Um, I've done it a few times where I put buttons outside of a portal row. Most of the times they're inside the portal row. So if you had a trash button, you would simply make a new button. We'll go up to the button tool again, select that. I'll drag that out a little bit smaller this time. We'll use this one. We'll choose the icon. We choose an icon. I throw on the trash. Right now, instead of creating a script, I'm going to choose a single script because I know I can. And I'm going to say uh, delete. And I can choose the portal row right there. I can turn the dialog off, meaning it'll be instantaneous. This is a great way to get used to FileMaker. We'll drag this uh, button a little bit wider and then we'll put it within the context of the row. Now there's one thing I want you to know about portals. Portals are what, know, what are known as container objects. So in other words, if this is outside of this and I drag it and it's hanging over, it has not gone within the containment of the portal. I know it's obvious, but there's a way, a couple of ways that you can see this. Number one is when I drag this in within the boundaries of the first row of the portal, that means that it is now contained in the portal. When I drag this, if it disappears, see how that trash can goes half out of the way? If I drag it out and anywhere else, FileMaker is not going to take it out of that container until I release. But provided I don't release, it will is still contained in that particular area, which means there are times when you can have something in a portal that's actually, watch this, out of visible range. So I'm going to drag this right here. Notice that FileMaker didn't take that out because the trash can itself is hidden. Now I'm going to drag this. This button is still inside of this portal. That's a very important thing to know about FileMaker that if you drag something like that, Without dragging the whole thing out, it's still contained in that portal. We can always see that by going up to this inspector right here called Objects. And when we look at that, we can see that this portal, if I click here, it selects the portal. It has a button. And when I select this button and we zoom out, we can see that that button is not in the visible area of the portal. This does happen to users, and they sometimes can't figure it out. No big deal. We can select it with that inspector over here, the object palette. And then we can get that button back in on the screen. So as we were looking at right there, I've got a delete button on every layout. I actually hate this type of system because look, we've got a delete button on the record row that's expecting a new record. And there's nothing in this record. There's literally nothing to delete here, but this button still shows. I also don't like it on each and every row. We can solve that, and I've done it in some other videos, but we're talking about portals here. You can always head over to FileMakerMagazine.com. So, as expected, with no dialog, I could just click these, and it will just get rid of them. I could do the same thing with the button out here. Select the record, and then click the button, and then have take some type of action, and the context of the row is understood. So, that is use case number one. That is the default FileMaker use for a portal. If I wanted another value, I'll just type it in because I'm going to need the data, 444 and 1212. Oh, and as I mentioned, those options, we could go in and if I wanted to sort this portal, I can double click the portal. And of course, I can turn on a sort and sort it based on any field of that related data. In this case, I could do it based on number. Let's go ahead and do that doesn't make sense right now, but I would be able to do that. I could also filter this portal based on anything. Anything within FileMaker's calculation engine, you can filter this portal. So I'm going to say left of the phone number, and I'm going to say three characters, and I'm going to say is equal to, not equals in that one, 800. 
So what I am saying in this calculation for this filter, for this portal, is I am saying if the left of this equals 800, then you are going to show. So let's take a look at what happens. We go in here, we click OK, we've got a filter on this. It does not mean that I cannot enter data that won't match that filter. It just means that once the data is entered, it will disappear. So watch this. We are going to go with an 888 number, which is not 800-555-1212. Now the record has not been committed, but as soon as I click outside of this portal, or if I went to another record, or if I clicked on this button and it did something, when I click, that record is presumably going to go away. It did not self-delete. The data is still there. It is just hidden because that filter is not allowing it to show. Also note that when you're writing calculations for filters, you have to be pretty sure that your data is going to be exactly what you expect because if I put in a parenthesis around this and I say the left three characters, is this still 800? No, it is not. It is now parenthesis 80, which is much different than 800. And when I click, that of course is going to go away. But if I go into layout mode, double click on my portal, I might have to revise my filter in order to get it to work, or I'll just turn the filter off. And of course, everything is going to be there because the filter is just a display mechanism. It controls what is or is not displayed within a portal. So now we're going to head to the other two uses for a portal. If you are brand new to FileMaker, the lesson that you just got about portals will cover you for probably 70 to 80% of all of the use cases that you are going to use portals for. However, if you want to go a step beyond, if you want to be a better FileMaker developer, then what you're going to get from this video, the rest of this video, is that portals, again, are just a display mechanism. They are not just for the use of related data. That is not the only purpose that they serve. So let's take a look at some other options. All right, are you ready? Are you ready to start to learn all of the advanced uses for a portal as a display mechanism? Well, this is where we get into the fact that FileMaker has this thing called a multi-key field, which allows you to put in multiple key values in order to display certain things. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our defined database. I'm going to go into the fields. Now where you create this field really depends on the context of where the user is in the database. If you're not familiar with FileMaker's notion of context, let me explain it a little bit for you. We're going to switch to the relationships. In the relationship graph, think of each one of these as an island. And that island has a connection. It is the bridge that we see right here between them. Well, from that particular island, you are only able to access any content that is connected via a bridge. But in FileMaker, it is very possible that as I scroll this up and scroll this up, you will have many different sets of disconnected table occurrence groups, as they're called. In other words, this is just a table occurrence group, and this is a table occurrence group. So that means that if you're on a layout based on this table occurrence, you cannot get to this island because there is no connection until or unless one is made. Now, sometimes you don't want them because a highly interconnected uh, graph in FileMaker can be a little bit slower. So you have to plan out your strategy. Getting rid of those two, what we're taking a look at is what is our current context? Which island are we on? We are on the people context. We can see right here that we're on a layout and it happens that this layout is directly tied to this table occurrence, which is directly tied to this base table right here. That's how it works. Because I can have multiple instances of this same table occurrence pointing to the same base table. We can see that when I double click. Yep, this this portal or this table occurrence is connected to people. Doesn't matter what I name it. Name it anything. Although I highly suggest that you name things so that they make sense. As soon as I name something really funky, it 
not good. Not a good idea. I should at least include the word people in there somewhere, whether it's at the end or whether it's at the beginning. Either one. It helps me keep track. But knowing what our context is, we can set up a global relationship. Now, a global relationship is something that is unique to each user that logs into the system. So we go and we create our field in people because that's our context. And we are going to call this keys. Um, you can call it something else, but I'm just going to call mine keys. And I'm going to create that field, and then I'm going to go over to the options. In the options, I'm going to have a setting under the storage that says use global storage. And you can see right there that I checked that one on. And when you make a field global, it's basically global to the whole of the file, but it does something different. It actually makes that data, whatever is in this field called keys, specific and unique to each user. That means that user A, user B, and user C can potentially all have something different within this field called keys merely because it's a global field. This is a super key concept in FileMaker. What this means is that you can put arbitrary values into this if you're going to use a portal related to it. So let's hook up that portal. We go to relationships and what is the data that we're going to look at? In this case, we want to look at data from details. We're going to get a certain number of values from details. And this will happen, you'll know it when you need it. Right now it may not make sense for what we're setting up because we know that any given person, that person owns those phone numbers. But let's say we have a scenario where we want to see only the 800 numbers. Well, we could have used a filter to do that. So that's our first way to accomplish, that, accomplish it. The second way using a keys related to the ID value of details is going to allow us to do something pretty unique. So in this situation, what we're going to do is we are going to have, um, it looks a little bit interesting right here, especially since I explained how it works. But this is, I don't know, how do you explain this? Is this, is this a hack? It's not really a hack. It's a default FileMaker behavior, but it doesn't make sense when you look at it. We get this little indicator right here that says we've got a global or a no-go field. I sort of think of that little pipe right there as a stop sign, like stop, this won't work. Well, actually it will. This will be a global field multi-key related to a given ID, but it can actually be multiple IDs. Now on the relationship, we do not need to check anything. There's no reason to. We are using this portal as a display mechanism. It's what I've been saying, saying all along. So let's add that portal to our layout. We are going to, there's a couple, there's many ways you can do this. If I wanted another version of this portal because I like the same size, I'm going to option drag this portal and then just get rid of the parts that I don't need. There's no reason for me to try to guess and go get another one because I can just select everything that's in it. In fact, I can draw a marquee uh, by holding down the command key and drag uh, to select everything around there and just get rid of everything in it. And I have the exact same size portal. I can double click the portal. I can say I want to show records from not details, but details too. That was the second table occurrence that I just made in that graph. That's because the relationship is different. This is the relationship in details. If we take a look at manage database is based on that keys instead of the ID to the foreign key. So the relationship being totally different means I'm able to get totally different results in my portal. So with details too, I'm gonna to turn off my sort, I'm going to turn off my allow, I'll go ahead and leave that on and I'll leave this on. It's a, For all intents and purposes, it is the same portal. Could I have gone up here and dragged it? Yeah, I could have dragged out a new one, but I just wanted another one that looked exactly the same. I just have to remember to modify it by turning on and off various things. So we also need our field, which I'm going to option drag a copy of the keys field. So we're going to add that right there and we're going to put this. I'm going to do one other thing. In the inspector over here on the side with this keys selected, 
I'm going to go up here to the top area. This fourth tab in the inspector is the data tab. And I'm going to choose this option right here, show vertical scroll bar. This is going to allow me to make this scrolling so that I, if I have more than a certain number of keys. Now we'll go into browse mode and nothing is showing in my portal. This is what I mean by a display mechanism. A portal, which normally is showing related data, can be used to display whatever you want. So in this scenario, we know that it's based on the ID value. So we're going to go up to the file menu. We're going to go to the manage and go to the layouts. I happen to know that FileMaker creates a layout by default for all of the different tables that you create. And lo and behold, there is one right there for me, details. I'll just simply click the open button. It will open that up and I'm going to go to the third of FileMaker's three views, form, list, and table, so that I can see by table, looking at my values, which currently it does not have the ID on the layout. So I'm going to go back into layout mode with command or control L, and I'm going to make sure that I get that ID field on the layout because that's what I need to see. Now, everything that I am doing here right now is all going to be manual. But remember, in FileMaker, we have access to a very powerful scripting engine. So I would be able to extract or cherry pick any given values that I want using a multitude of different ways and put those into this global field. This is just so that you learn how to use portals. So I want, let's say, for example, I want this number 800444 and this 900 number. So there's the 800444. I'm going to take its primary ID by selecting all, copy, go over to my keys field global, paste it, and then have the value not show up. We'll have to figure out how we're gonna get that to show up. More than likely we will, and it may be a, a relationship issue or something that I have, but we will go ahead and get this value as well. We'll copy that and we'll come over and we will paste it. Actually, we need to go into layout mode, make this super long, the same width, and we'll make it super small so that each of our keys are on their own line. There we go. There is what I have what we need. And we'll paste this one right here. So we are using a portal for the purpose of display. Now we just have to figure out why this is not turning on. I'm doing this as I'm recording, so I didn't pre-make this file so you could follow along. So this is good for actually troubleshooting how and why something won't work. So we have a record in our portal. Sometimes FileMaker wants a record on both sides and if you have no record, it doesn't work. We have our portals table with our ID. We're able to relate to that. Let's make sure our keys field is a global field and it is relating to the ID. Let's double check one thing that can always hang people up. We always wanna make sure that the type of field is the same on both sides. So we've got a text field on this side and over on the details side, the ID is also a text. You always wanna make sure that the uh, both options are the same. And this is a, uh, according to the validation, which is that option right there, it is not empty and unique. That's not a problem. Um, auto enter, it is a UUID and we are prohibiting modification. It is for some reason not showing. I am going to figure out why. All right, I feel so silly, but this is a great example of regardless of whether you've been working in FileMaker for one year or 20 years like myself, there's always something you miss. What did I not do? Well, I did reassign the portal because it is from details to but I didn't add a field. You probably saw me doing that and we're like, oh, Matt, please. All right, I am going to take a copy of this field. But again, we have to remember where is the field coming from? What is the context? Well, in this case, if we were, go, were to go to manage database here, our context is details too. We are on people, we're using a global field and we're looking into details two. That means the field needs to come from details two. It cannot come from details one. I copied the field from details one portal into details two. That means I need to reassign it. The other option would have been just to drag the field out from the sidebar. So we go to details two and I make sure that I'm showing my phone number 
And now when I go into browse mode, I am going to get those the first record, which is not what I want to have happen. Phone number, details one through five, details two. Say OK. Browse. There we go. <laughs> this is this is a testament to all the little things that if you're frustrated by FileMaker, don't be frustrated. It is just a matter of knowing what are all the things that you need to check. So we can double check now. And hopefully you can see the value of what this is in terms of a portal and a display mechanism. As I zoom in here, we can see quite clearly with my table off to the side, and I'll get this so that we can see it. It is showing the 800 number and the 900 number because I took this ID and this ID. Now, if I wanted to add to that, all I would have to do is add this ID. And so arbitrarily, now when I click out and the record is committed, we can see that that record is showing up. Is it the one, two, three? It is one, two, three. We have a match between this and this. So this opens up a world of possibilities. This second use case is that you can use a global field and you can create a script that goes to another layout, does a search, searches for, let's say, all of the contestants who are age 50 and older. It grabs all of those IDs. There's multiple ways to do that. And then it brings those IDs back and it puts them into a given field, which is unique to every user using the system. Meaning Bob sees everybody who's 50 and old, older, while Mary is doing something completely different and looks for everybody who's 50 and younger. And her list of keys is different than Bob's list of keys. And what she sees within the portal is completely variable. That is a very, very powerful thing that you need to know about FileMaker. So if you've only ever been using portals for the purpose of just related data, you need to expand what you know. And now you know that a portal as a display mechanism can be used to simply display data. So what is the third option that we have or the third use case for a portal? Well, let's take a look at that. All right, are you ready? Okay, this is the third primary use for portals. It was, it's been used for a long time, but there was a gentleman named Bruce Robertson who popularized it by writing, uh, doing a really extensive write-up about how it works and how you can use it. Um, it essentially works like this. You are going to set up a portal with a relationship for the purpose of displaying data that is not in a field, it's actually in a global variable. Or it, actually, it doesn't matter. The data can come from any other field or any other global, but predominantly developers use it to show variable data within the portal, using the portal as a display mechanism, but putting the data within a global variable. So if you've hung in this far, Good for you, because we're getting into advanced stuff with portals. This is probably one of the most advanced ways to use a portal. I'm going to go into my defined database. I'm going to create a new table, and I'm going to call it what Bruce called it, virtual list. I'm going to create that table. Now, by default, my FileMaker creates some default fields. I do not need any of those default fields, so I'm going to double click and I'm going to select all of them. I'm going to hold down the option key and click delete, which forcibly deletes them without a prompt. I am now going to create a single field called record number. I am going to switch that to a calculated value. I'm going to click create and I am going to put in here get record number number. Now, what this is, is this is going to be a way for us to put data into memory, into a global variable, but use a portal for the purpose of displaying that data. And the, the reason this is so great is because when you are doing a lot of things within FileMaker, it's many times within a loop or collecting data, and then you want to present that data. If you collect the data from one table, where let's say it's a smaller subset of data and you want to present it within a particular way, 
you can do that using this system. You could use it with the global field and using a multi-key field, but this way is also super powerful because the data can be in a global variable. So we are going to click on our storage options and notice that most of the time when you create a FileMaker function or a FileMaker calculation that uses any of the get functions except for two. These are the two that I can think of. Maybe there might be another one, but one of them is get record number and the other one is get record ID. These values can be indexed. Now, if you don't know what an index is and you're just learning FileMaker, an index is important within portals because the portal that you're displaying on the layout, its data has to be indexed or has to be based on something that is indexed. So if we turn this, uh, you know, FileMaker will automatically turn this on because this is checked, but we can basically say all right now and make this particular value a number field, which is just the record number, meaning each and every record that we create in this table will simply just have a value of the number that it is. Record one will be record one, record two, three, four, each record is just what it is. And we can actually have this be indexed. This is important because we need to be able to use a relationship to get to this data. So let's create the records. We're going to go up and create a new window. I happen to know that FileMaker did create a, a layout for me by default. We'll go to it. Currently we have zero records. It is always important that you have a large number of records. In fact, using this system, it really doesn't matter whether we have a thousand, 2,000 or 10,000 records. Well, the higher the record count you get, it does impact you a little bit based on the number of fields and what type of fields you have within this virtual list. We're only going to have one, so even if we had 10,000 records, it really wouldn't be that big of a deal. Well, I'm gonna just use the command in here and hold it down. I'm holding it down right now, even though it's showing nine when I release, you'll see that I've got 88. I'll go up and I'll go past 100. It really doesn't matter. We simply want to have more records than we ever would the amount of data that we would want to show. So if I would ever want to show 10,000 uh, pieces of data in my virtual list, I would need to have 10,000 records or more. So we need to display data from a variable. Let's create the variable first. Again, this is advanced, and if you are you haven't worked with variables before, then you'll need to take a look at some of my videos about let functions. As I go into the data viewer, which in FileMaker, you're going to find that under the tools area, which the tools, you're going to have to turn those on if you have not in FileMaker Pro 19. Earlier than FileMaker Pro 19, you'll have FileMaker Advanced. We'll create a variable. I'm going to create one called a let function and I'm going to call this just data, and I'm going to set it equal to, right now it doesn't matter what it is. The only reason I'm doing this is just to initialize this variable here in FileMaker. I do not currently have the automatically evaluate turned on. I'll go ahead and turn that on, which means that this was just created automatically and populated with a value of one. I could turn this off and click this multiple times. Either way, it doesn't matter. We will see that this value in memory exists. I can delete this calculation, doesn't matter, the value is still there. We go to current and there it is. Data was initialized with a value of one. So let's put some data in here. Now this global variable, as they are called, can be populated with whatever data you want using any type of FileMaker script. Going, collecting data, collecting it from one table, two tables, three tables, four, it doesn't matter where the data comes from. It can all be put into this global variable. And we'll say, hey, this is cool. Now there's a key here. Everything is a one to one ratio. In other words, for record number one, this would be the, fir the first value. For record number two, because this is value two, it would be value two, three, four, ad nauseum. So with that data in there, we are able to set up now a structure where the portal displays this data. We need to create the field. I'm gonna, going to open the defined database, go to my virtual list, and we are going to call this display. Why? Because we're displaying 
the data. Now, there's so many things that you can do with virtual list. It's incredible. But what we're going to do is we are going to create this field. It's going to be a calculation field. And in most cases within a virtual list, when you create this, that calculation, when we see on the storage options, is going to be unstored because we're referencing something that's global in nature. So what we're going to do is, in this case, it's super simple. We are going to say get value. Where is my list of values? My list of values is over in my data right here. So I'll bring this on screen. Let's The list of values is coming from data. Let me capitalize it since that's just what I do, one of my things. Now, what is the value? How do we get the hey, which we know is number one, or the this, which is two, or the is? Ah, we already have it. It's right here in front of us. It's the record number. Record number one is always record number one. Record number two always is record number two. So if I get the value out of data of the record number, then that means I, my display is going to show what I want to show. Now let's visit the storage options right here, always important. This one is actually allowing me to turn on indexes for this. I don't know why, but most of the time what you're going to see is this. FileMaker is automatically going to have this checked because you're not able to do it. In this particular case, it is allowing me to do that. So I'm, a, I'm going to actually turn this. Uh, I know that I'll need this off. I'll need it to be unstored. And it's probably doing that because I'm referencing a stored value of the record number. But we're finally able to set up our portal. And this is the cool part. This is where you get to see the magic. We go to our main context and we need a relationship. Our current context is people right here we need to from people see into the virtual list now how can we see all records in filemaker one of the easiest way as i collapse these down to see all records is through what's known as a uh, cartesian join and this basically the easiest way to think of this is show me everything and really, it doesn't matter what we connect to. I can grab from ID to the record number, which doesn't even make sense, double-click my relationship, and choose this option of X right here, which is a Cartesian join. It basically means show me everything. As soon as I change it, we are going to see that these options are going to go away, or at least the top one. You can still delete related records. You still sort them, but you cannot create anything based on this because it's not specific enough. Relating any given unique value from a person to a list that's just holding records with a calculated field doesn't make sense. So, of course, you can't create anything because it's not specific. But that's okay. We don't care. We simply want to use this portal as a display mechanism. So, we go into layout mode and we are going to drag our portal out this time. I'll just drag this out. And we are going to be showing our records from our virtual list. And we are going to allow scrolling. We'll turn this when scrolling. We'll leave it at 12. It really doesn't matter right now, but we'll say OK. And what do we want to display? We want to display our data. And we will move that over right there. So if everything works out, look at what we get. There it is. Hey, this is cool. What happens if you change your data within your variable? Well, the portal will completely change. Again, we're working with a portal here that is not showing data based on a related table or filtering based on a related table. It is showing data based on any data that we want in memory in a variable. This is now totally different we click ok now it's ok our data has been updated the one thing that we need to remember is that even though this hasn't changed yet it's a display issue filemaker needs uh, a script or something that will actually update it because you can see that as i hover those first two changed watch when i hover over the next one it changes to now when i hover over the next one it changes to that and then, it, so you can see what FileMaker is doing is anything that's underneath the cursor, FileMaker is redrawing to the screen. But 
had I used a script step, which we'll create a, a script really quickly here, and we'll just zoom in here, and we'll just say uh, refresh portal. If I had given that portal a name and called it something like uh, virtual list, or just call it vList for short, and I'll go ahead and take that and show you how to name it. But if I had called this, when I changed the data, I would be able to actually update it. So we'll leave that script right there, visible so that we can click the uh, run button right there, and we'll change the data. We'll go into, um, what was I trying to do here? VList, I need to name the object. We'll go into layout mode. I select my portal. With it selected, we can go to the first tab, which is the this area right here, and this name needs to be that name that we're refreshing. So there it is right there, VList, I pasted it. So that means that this is now going to be refreshed when we update the data. So we'll go into browse mode. I need to show my data viewer again. Let's update it one more time and we'll run our script without passing over the, um, over the values right here. So we'll go right here. We're going to change the data. So let's zoom in right here. This is random data from anywhere being shown in a portal as a display, let's see if I can spell this, mechanism. <laughs> Hopefully I got that right. But, all right, our portal wasn't updated, but we run the script, select it, run it, boom. It shows right there. Now you may be asking yourself, in fact I was, as soon as that came up, I got this question mark. When we look at this, being shown and as a display mechanism, it simply means that this field is not long enough to show this particular value. So FileMaker is showing a question mark. Why FileMaker does that, I don't know, I don't like it. But if I was to go like this and simply just drag this knowing that I can extend it out, there it's gonna display it with it cut off and I'm going to get the solution I want. So this has been a long tutorial video. If you hung in the whole time during this video, congratulations to you. You have picked up a lot of tips that help you become not just a good and decent FileMaker developer, but an expert FileMaker developer because you now know the three primary ways to use a portal. As intended, FileMaker is native, for the purpose of controlled filtering using a global field so that each unique user on the system sees something totally different within the portal. Very key. And then finally, using the ultimate of display, being able to display any data that is pulled from anywhere and simply just put into memory. And knowing those three key uses for a portal means that you are now no longer in the world of, oh yeah, FileMaker portals are there to display related data. Nope, you know the answer. Portals are there as a display mechanism. As always, I'd like to wish you much luck with your own FileMaker development. And if you'd like to learn more, head over to FileMakerMagazine.com. Until next time, much luck and happy FileMaking. We hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial and we'd like to say thank you for your subscription and your support. If you're not already a subscriber, head on over to www.filemakermagazine.com slash subscribe for more information about the benefits of joining.